Hi friends, welcome to Ajay Automation channel. Today we are going to conduct mock test interview for our candidate Chinnu who is a testing engineer. So she has around 3 years of experience working in testing industry. So let's evaluate her skill set in Selenium and Java. So hi Chinnu, can you quickly introduce about yourself? Sure. Uh, myself Chinnu. I have overall plus year experience in testing industry. I have worked in manual testing, automation testing and API testing. My roles include, I am responsible for reviewing the user stories provided in Jira, create and execute the test data, creating the test script using Selenium Java, report the facts, and also I have performed API testing using Postman, and also I am responsible for sending the QA weekly test summary report to my client manager. Okay. So, can you explain about your automation framework? What are the different components of your framework? Sure. So we are using data driven framework, it follows a page object model design pattern. For sending the test data we are using Excel, we have integrated Apache POI library. Uh, we use test uh, 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 library in our framework for uh, uh, test report, uh, grouping, uh, prioritizing the test and parallel execution. For version control we are using Git repo and uh, for CACD test execution we use uh, BAM. Okay. So how do you generate test logs? So we are using uh, log 4 day for capturing the logs. Okay. So how many test cases you have in your automation framework approximately? Uh, nearly we have automated 400 uh, test cases. So what sort of test cases? What type? Uh, so it includes a uh, smoke test case, a uh, regression and system test case. Okay. So, uh, you said around 400 test cases, so after execution, how do you know about the failed test cases? How do you re-execute the failed test cases? So, um, uh, we are using test the library for that. Uh, after every test execution, uh, a test output folder will be created. Uh, in that, uh, we can see the uh, test in the dot, uh, uh, test in the fail dot XML. In that, we can see the failed test case and we can rerun it if it is needed. Okay, ma, good. So, how many test cases you automate per sprint? If it is a major test case, uh, means uh, we will be automating 3 to 4 test cases per sprint. If it is a medium means we will be automating 7 to 8 test cases per sprint. If it is UI related, uh, nearly 9 to 10 test cases will be automated. Okay. So, what are the test engine annotations you are using in your framework? Uh, so, in our framework, we are using a test, at before test, then after test, at before method, at after method, at before class, and at after class. We are using Okay, so how do you prioritize this? So uh, we are we are having one tested in the annotation as a priority. So by using that, we can prioritize the test. Okay, so do you know about grouping in test ng? How do you group uh, smoke test cases, regression test cases? Uh, for that, we are using test ng. So we have to uh, in the app. Test, we have to provide the group name as smoke and uh, regression. Then in the uh, testng.xml file, we have to provide uh, include. Okay. Along with the include, you have to provide the group name as well. Okay, in the XML file. Oh. So, what do you mean by parallel execution? Have you done parallel execution? Yeah, we have. I have done that. So, parallel execution means running the uh, test cases in multiple browsers as known as uh, parallel execution. Uh, multiple browsers oh. and in multiple platforms also okay oh. it can work in different OS different machines so how do you do achieve oh. parallel execution what changes you will make in your code uh, so in the testng.xml uh, file we will be giving uh, parallel is equal to test and we have to provide the value okay so what do you mean by pra parameterization how do you achieve parameterization so, parameterization means uh, running the same test case with the different set of data is known as uh, parameterization. Uh, we can achieve it through in the uh, uh, testng.xml file. We have a annotation named as a parameter and we have to pass that value. Okay. So, what are the different domains you have worked in your career so far? Uh, so, I have worked in healthcare, e-commerce and enterprise uh, resource planning. Okay, so have you worked really worked on uh, configuring CACD setup? Uh, uh, I'm responsible for um, uh, 
uh, writing the code and after writing the code, I will be pushing it in the git. So once uh, I push the code, uh, it will be running in the API CD template. Okay, so who built your uh, pipeline? Uh, so that will be done by my uh, DevOps team. So I am responsible for pushing it to the git repo. Okay, got it. Okay. So what are the different locators you are using in your automation framework? Um, uh, we are using ID, Xpath, CSS selector, Lintex, partial Lintex and Plasma. Okay, so which is the best locator according to you? Uh, ID is the best locator because uh, this is the fastest and unique one. Okay, so what are the different types of weights used in Selenium? Uh, I have used implicit and explicit weights. So can you explain those? Yeah, implicit weight means uh, that weight will be applied uh, toward the code. Explicit weight means uh, we can identify a particular web element and we can apply weight for that element, like color is present, element to be clickable. Okay, so which one is better approach? Is it good to use implicit or explicit weight? Uh, explicit weight is uh, the good approach because we can identify a particular element and we can apply for that only element. But in explicit weight, that weight will be applied throughout the code. Okay, by using explicit weight, we save some amount of execution time. Okay, so that's okay. the main advantage. So try to avoid using implicit weight. And uh, so, how will you handle dynamic web elements? Consider the locator keeps on changing. What will you do here? How will you identify that web element? So we can uh, use absolute XPath. Okay. Uh, and so we have uh, to traverse absolute. from parent to child. Okay, from top of the yeah. HTML element to the desired web element. Okay. So, how will you automate drop down? So, we can use select class. Uh, to select the values from the drop down, we are having three methods. Select by value, select by visible text and select by index. Okay. So, how will you automate alert messages? So, uh, first we need to uh, switch the selenium to alert. For that we will be using switch to. Then we can uh, if you want to accept it, we can use uh, alert.accept and alert.dismiss. Okay. For clicking cancel button, we can use dismiss method. Okay. And for getting the text, we have to use get okay. method. Okay. So how will you validate whether all the links in a web page is successful or it is working fine? So uh, we can find all the web page of the link using the app and app. Then we have to send the HTTP uh, request uh, for the link and we have to uh, get the, read the response of that. So, if the request is valid, then we can, uh, based on the response, we can validate the list. Okay. So, have you done uploading in Selenium? How do you upload files using Selenium? Uh, yeah, I have done it and for, for that we have used uh, sentries and also I have used auto IP to upload files. Okay. So, one more thing is we can use robot class also for uploading files. Okay. So, oh. let's switch to Java concepts. So, what are the different whoops concepts you have used in your automation framework? Uh, so, I have used abstraction, interface, uh, uh, inheritance, uh, polymorphism, and encapsulation. So, what is inheritance? Inheritance means uh, inheriting the attributes of parent class to child classes are uh, inheritance. Okay. So, what is method overloading and overriding? So method overloading means uh, we'll be having the same function name with a different number and type of arguments in pair and size that. Method overriding means we'll be having the same function name but different number and type of arguments in pair and size class. Okay. So what is the difference between abstract class and interface? So uh, abstract class means we'll be having abstract method and normal method but in uh, interface we'll be only using abstract methods. Okay. So, what are all interfaces you know or you are aware of in your framework? So, I am aware of WebDriver. WebDriver is an interface. Okay. So, what are the different Java collections concepts you are aware of? So, uh, ArrayList, uh, HashLab, Hashlab, and HashStack. Okay. So, what is the difference between Array and ArrayList? Uh, array it is uh, used to store uh, the values of same data type. It is uh, static, so we can't add any extra data to that. Uh, array list means uh, uh, it is dynamic, so we can add uh, extra data if we need it. 
ओके आर एस आई सी फिक्सड वेर एस आर एल एस वी के इस डायनामिक ओके गुड सो कैन यू एक्सिक्यूट अ जावा प्रोग्राम विदाउट मेन मेथड ओके सो वी विल गेट कंपलेशन एर ओके if we execute any program okay. without using main method explain that also so consider you have a static block of code and you have a main method block of code so how will the program work what will be the order of execution which block will be executed first a uh, static block will be executed first uh, then only main block will be executed okay good so uh, consider a java program you have to Uh, tell the logic for this program okay consider a string and you, you just have to reverse a string okay you can take any city names like chennai or bangalore as a string so what logic you will um, explain here to reverse the string okay first you will be declaring the uh, string value in a variable uh, once we declare we have to use the loop uh, so on that too uh, we will be finding that uh, particular string length then we have to determine the value So after that, inside the loop, we will be using uh, str that uh, string dot a uh, caret of i minus. So then the loop will be iterated, and that reverse uh, string value will be reverse. Okay, but do you have to increment or decrement? So in the loop, uh, we have to uh, with the loop we have to decrement the value to get the reverse. Okay, good. So are you working in agile uh, model? So does your project yeah, follow agile? Okay. So what are the different agile ceremonies you are aware of? So I am aware of sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint demo, and sprint backlog. Okay. So, uh, what do you mean by product backlog? Oh, uh, in product log backlog, it will contain all the project requirements. Okay. So what is mean by sprint backlog then? Uh, so in the sprint backlog, it will be containing that uh, particular sprint increment in the sprint backlog. So it contains the particular sprint related tickets only. Okay. So from product lag backlog only, we will be taking sprint backlogs related tickets. So uh, how many? How much is the duration for a sprint in your project? I uh, nearly two to three weeks. Okay. So. Consider you have a large amount of testing to be done at the end of the sprint. What will you do here? So at that time, uh, I will be running all the critical uh, tickets first. Uh, once the critical ticket is done, I will be informing the team. Uh, like uh, I will be missing some test scenario because I got all the tickets at the end of the sprint. So there may be a chance of missing some scenarios. And also, I am drafting the mail to my uh, manager regarding the sprint. Okay. Good. So, what is smoke testing? Uh, so, uh, smoke testing will be performed at the initial build of the software. We'll be checking whether all the critical functionalities of the application are working fine or not. Okay. So, what is regression testing then? Uh, regression testing. Uh, when our garrison teams in this uh, apply to the software, we will be checking whether the existing functionality is uh, still working fine after a few changes. Okay. Okay. So why do you feel I should hire you? So uh, I feel uh, I have the technical abilities to work in the uh, automation environment, and I can grab things quickly. Okay, ma. Good. So we have uh, come to the end of today's mock test. Okay. So to provide feedback for you, uh, okay. you have answered well in uh, Selenium concepts, Java concepts, and uh, Agile methodologies, and the programming also. So okay. So out of five, I would provide uh, around three to three point five. So what improvement you can take from this mock test is uh, you have to reduce the speed of your answering. Okay, try to reduce the speed because while you are answering faster, you are, you are making some grammar errors or some errors from the technical perspective. Okay, so if you talk slowly, you might answer it properly. Okay, that is one uh, thing you can take. So technically, for a three-year experienced candidate, you have a uh, uh, good knowledge in Selenium and Java concepts. So today I, I was asking basic questions in Java. So in our upcoming mock test, we can uh, go bit advanced in Java concepts and Java collections. Okay. Okay, Chinu. Thanks for joining today. We can uh, drop off. Okay, thank you.
so that's all we have in this video dear friends so i hope this video will be really useful for your upcoming automation interviews also if you want to attend mock test with us please do comment your email or phone number in the video description we will reach out to you and help you in clearing automation interviews okay so thank you for watching please do subscribe my channel ajay automates and watch out for more automation training videos thank you have a good day bye